How do you fancy learning how to paint a wood mouse in watercolour? Well, let me show you some of the clips from my main video on how I painted the eyes. Let's get started. So the first thing I want to do once I've got the drawing on the paper with the wood mouse is think about outlining the eyes using a, just a very light mixture of burnt on bird lamp black, that kind of thing really. What that tends to do is kind of seal the pencil into the paper um, just so it doesn't wash away when I put the, the watercolour washes over the top. Once I've got these outlines on then at least I can look at trying to work on all the details in between. I'm going to start filling in the eyes, I know it's a bit scary part really, so fill in the eyes using a little bit of burnt umber, a little bit of mixture of red in there as well to kind of get a bit of some form of a warm for the background colour of the eyes. I'm doing this gently with my double zero brush just to ensure I can keep within the lines. Now once that colour's on there, I can start thinking about picking up around all the details within the eyes, especially those highlights, because I've got those highlights in the middle. I'm going to do the same again with the other one, hence the speeded up video part at the moment. Remember this is in real time on the main video, um, so this is just a very cut down version for the clips I've taken for you. So I'm going to start building this up using a little bit of black with a brown as well, yes I use black. So I know it's a bit of a, a, bit of a thing, not everybody likes to use black, if you don't use black, then obviously think about using a blue and a red or whatever you want to use and a brown to make your own version of a black. So working on outline the eyes as well. Trying to think about mixing the colours as well. Now that's some black I know again, a bit of a controversial thing, but everybody's different in the way they paint. We all know that. That's what makes us all very unique. And my style is certainly different to a lot of other people's. But that's what I like. Everybody's unique and everybody paints the way they want to paint. So a bit of black and brown this time round. I want to get even darker within these eyes. I want to make them really dark in there. The good thing about doing it this way is that once you've got the dark colours in the eyes, then you can start to think about picking out some of the details as well by using a lifting off technique. The outside rim of the eyes as well, the eyelids, that kind of thing. I'm thinking about like a rope, like a rope shape, if you know what I mean and the kind of curves are within that rope. And I explain all this within my real-time video on how I do that. So I think about the shape and the curves all the time. Now then, here we go. I'm gonna lift off a little bit of paint, just a little bit, to create a highlight within the eye. Just the bottom, like a reflective light within the, uh, the kind of roundness of the eye itself. And add a little bit of blue in there. I want a bit of color in the eye as well. And then start to think about all the little finer details around the outside of the eye using barely any paint on my brush. Now adding the white highlights, just thinking about trying to get that kind of glisten, that glow. I'm always thinking about shape as well. And with anything with the eyes, always take your time painting those because they have that life and soul of the animal. And, uh, some people paint the eyes first, some people paint them last. I always like to paint them first. My reason behind that is because I like to be able to see the life of that animal, be it a dog portrait, a cat, a bird, whatever it might be, um, whilst I'm painting the rest of the fur or the feathers. I can look at those eyes whilst I'm painting it. So again, I'm picking up all the finer details of in the eyes using my double zero brush. I'm going to test it, take off a little bit of paint off your brush first because that enables you to, well it stops getting those blobs on the paper as well. There's nothing worse you load up your brush from the palette and you come to the painting and then you add your brush to the, board, to the, to the paper and then you just get this massive blob there. So uh, take a little bit off like that before you do this. I'm going to add some finer details into the highlights now, picking out those kind of window effects. So you've got to think about what reflects within the eyes. So if you look deeply within those reflections, so that's why we always need a very large photo. You can very often see reflection of what, you know, like even the photographers sometimes, 
<laughs> within, within the highlight. I've done that, I've seen myself in the photograph before. Um, really deep within the highlight. So that's why when you take a photograph, you always think about taking a photograph very large because you can zoom in, especially on a tablet or computer, to those finer details within there. So again, I'm looking at all the finer details. I've already pulled out a highlight within the left eye as we look at it, and then pulling out some final little lines to sort of complete these little eyes, all in preparation for when I get the washes on the body of this lovely little wood mouse. I know, I love it, I really love it. I love all these fine details we can start adding once you've got all these washes on. So it's all about building up in layers as we go along. So there you go, that'll give you some ideas on how to paint the eyes on the wood mouse. Now if you fancy having a go at this and working on the complete video tutorial, I'll guide you through step by step, showing you a variety of techniques on how to do that. I'll also give you the outline drawing, the PDF guide, and the photograph to work from as well. To find out more, just simply click on the links below. Now remember to click on subscribe, like and share, and of course you can always comment down below as well. So I'll see you all again very soon. Bye bye for now.